Tesla just released their long-anticipated updates to the Model S and X with Model S Plaid. And it left people asking whether or not some of the features are awesome, pointless, or total jokes. I have a theory as to why they made the changes that they made and what things they could do to enhance their functionality and usability of these new designs for everyday scenarios. That and more next on The Tinker Talks. Why well, you gotta be mad? It's just a yoke. So, Model S Plaid, here it is. Competition is good, and I believe it is this competition that finally brought them to the point where they wanted to update these vehicles. You can see here some of the specifications for Model S Plaid, high range, very fast, 0 to 60 time. I think this is what one foot rollout, so who knows what it'll be in reality. And then uh, 200 miles per hour. I hope you're not going that fast anywhere other than a track. 1,020 horsepower. Okay, yeah, why not? But this is the real. They made these changes, and these changes are roughly the same between the Model S and the Model X. And this brings it a little bit more in line with their newer vehicles, the Model 3 and the Model Y. The new interior has a horizontal primary display, but they did retain the secondary display. I know a lot of people who had experienced the Model S before uh, were kind of fond of this, but you know, maybe it is rather redundant, particularly in the future that they are planning to create for themselves. And they finally managed to change where those cup holders were. <laughs> if you were the kind of person who picked up Starbucks or something every day, I mean, it would be really irritating or just carried around a water bottle. They didn't have any door pockets before either. So that's a good improvement. But the thing that made the biggest stir by far was certainly not the exterior and not the majority of the interior, but this, this steering yoke. And people are like, that's a weird looking steering wheel, but I wouldn't call it a steering wheel so much because I don't think it would roll, which seems kind of like it needs to be round and be able to roll to be called a wheel. Certainly not what this would do very well. Not only does it have a very unusual form factor and profile for the grips and stuff, but also it doesn't have any of these steering column stocks that were on any of their other vehicles. With the Model 3 and Y, they had reduced them down to only two stocks, which I felt was very functional, even if they could have implemented things like the wipers a little bit better. First thing was, I was kind of wondering if part of showing off this new design was had to do with trying to get the regulators into gear, trying to get them to increase the cadence and speed at which they are able to adjust the regulations and clarify the regulations, because that's been something that has been very slow here in the United States. And it'd be good if a lot of organizations who were responsible for that, perhaps NHTSA, the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration, would take steps to do testing, make certain that their regulations are not just based off of feelings, emotions, or prior conventions, but instead on whether or not the thing works and is safe. Now I wonder how much they really thought this would go through the first time, <laughs> as there is evidence that they had actually made renderings as shown here on Inside EVs. I'll have a link in the description for this article, which I suggest you look at all the links in my description for um, references and stuff. But they had found someone who had edited the links in order to find this image with a much more traditional steering wheel. Still doesn't have the stocks, uh, but isn't a total yoke style, and it does have a slightly flattened bottom there compared to their prior wheels. So quite a bit more conservative than what they ended up showing. Then they promptly removed the link to this or removed this image from their servers or something. So who knows what's going on there. But along the same vein of prompting the regulators to get things moving. I thought that they might possibly show substitutes for these traditional wing mirrors, like you see here, for cameras, like perhaps they had shown on the Cybertruck. I seem to recall them wanting to use side view cameras instead of mirrors on the original Model S, and they have that in their prototype or concept model, but nothing's happened since then, and that was a long time ago. They showed it again with the Cybertruck, and again, nothing seemed to happen yet. I don't know if there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background, and they have some kind of deal with it. NHTSA, and, and NHTSA said, hey, just don't talk about it or show anything like that about it, and we'll get it done, you know, I, I have no idea. What I do know for sure is that Europe already has regulations that defines what's acceptable in that regard, and there are already vehicles on sale and people are driving around right now that have those cameras. I know a lot of Americans aren't happy to be behind the Europeans in anything, so let's get this done, huh? Those two cars, by the way, are the Audi e-tron and the Honda e. I like the Honda e's implementation quite a bit more than the Audi e-tron where you're kind of they stick out like weird antennas and you gotta look like way down into the door card sort of area in order to see the thing but that's not what this video is about. If you want me to talk more about that let me know in the comments and uh, I might make a video specifically on that subject alone or primarily.
So anyway, there's some other interesting new things with regards to the Model S Plaid. They have new mega castings. They have extreme aerodynamics like they show here. Uh, 0.208 CD. Pretty wild for a car like that. But one unfortunate thing was that that actually came with a price increase. A bargain at $80,000. Or with the Plaid, 120 to 140 with a Plaid Plus. They're very impressive vehicles, and for their performance characteristics and functionality, some people will probably view them as a bargain, but they're well beyond the range of someone like myself. So why did they choose to introduce this new steering yoke design and remove the stocks from the steering column? I've heard a lot of creative ideas as to the explanation. Some seem more plausible than others. Elon just likes it seems pretty likely, allows for another axis of control for deliberate torque vectoring adjustments. Maybe? Or it allows you to control it like an airplane while it's flying. Maybe slightly less likely. Maybe we'll kind of get there with a the roadster. <laughs> now to my theory. I think it's because of this. Autopilot. Full self-driving, the future of driving, as they state here on their website. They plan to have these vehicles to be fully autonomous within... Well, as soon as possible, really. And in this full self-driving future, you don't really have much of a need for a steering wheel. Therefore, what you do with the design of steering controls in order to accommodate that intermediate period, the period of time where sometimes you are manually driving and sometimes the vehicle is essentially driving itself. That means reducing the steering controls to as simple a form as you can possibly do, while simultaneously making adjustments to make it still functional. Thusly this, the removal of the stocks and the shrinking of the controls down to the sort of minimum profile that they felt would be accepted by the regulators. Again, my theory. But take a look at this picture here. You've got the steering yoke. Now imagine that this steering yoke were to be retracted down in and towards the dashboard. You can see why they might want to remove the upper portion of a steering wheel, but even in manual driving, oftentimes the upper portion of the wheel can be obstructing part of the display here, so it would be nice to be able to remove that if it didn't compromise anything else. But anyway, you put this in towards the steering wheel, and this truncated lower portion will intrude minimally into your leg area, and and then the missing top portion will not obscure any sight lines. That necessitated two major changes. The removal of the stocks, so you didn't have to do something overly complicated in order to have them nestle into the dash somewhere. And probably the implementation of drive-by wire technology. So instead of having some kind of mechanical linkage between the steering control and the driving wheels that steer, thusly enabling the vehicle to steer without turning the steering control inside of the vehicle. Now, I don't know if there's really any examples of this going into production yet. I mostly remember it from concept vehicles. In fact, some recent concept vehicles have shown this kind of thing rather prominently. For instance, this really cool concept for the new Volkswagen minibus replacement, their concept car being called the ID Buzz. You can see here that the steering column doesn't have any stocks coming off of it. Essentially, you would have the option of having it in a manual driving mode like this. Then you would tap the Volkswagen emblem in the middle of the wheel, or oval thing, or whatever this thing's called. It's actually pretty close to a yoke, isn't it? And then it would retract into the dash like this. It's also important to note that they had to find an alternative to some sort of column shifter, and they also did not want to clutter up the interior or occupy any other interior space with other shifters, so they actually integrated it into the wheel. Tesla's solution is a little more... creative. Now I think gear selection or drive mode selection systems are something that is rife for disruption. Many designs are horrendously inefficient, take up so much space, and are at least inconvenient, if not potentially rather dangerous. If you want me to talk about gear knobs, gear selectors, mode selectors, and that sort of thing in another video, please again leave a comment with any particular information you wish for me to try and convey. I have quite a few thoughts on the matter, and I may even use my own vehicle as a demonstration for how it could potentially be dangerous. Probably a subject for another video. Right now, the important thing to know is that Tesla is intending on expanding their artificial intelligence into even that manual driving arena by having it try to determine the correct direction to set your motion in under certain circumstances. I don't know how this is triggered. <laughs> I have no idea how that's supposed to work. Like, do you put the, your foot on the brake and when you release the brake, then all of a sudden you're in drive or reverse? I don't know. That wouldn't be potentially very safe if you had creep enabled. Though, again, you're going to be relying upon probably the AI to prevent you from running into things automatically. Am I super concerned about this? Well, not 
particularly. People manually put their vehicles in the incorrect gear all the time. So if this thing's just as silly as people are with regards to that, then well, it's probably okay. One of the most important things to note is that you will be able to manually select that at least on the touch screen, if not some other touch point on the vehicle itself. That's part of the beauty of having these kind of touch screens is you can add that functionality if something unexpected happened or something didn't work as well as you thought it would. But still, it could be pretty awkward and they are definitely going to be made fun of for it. $140,000 and they can't afford a gear stick! <laughs> you know, something like that. Now, a bigger potential problem is inherent in that sort of steering yoke design. For people who have attempted to use that on a sort of normal, practical vehicle in everyday scenarios, many of them will tell you it's not the most convenient. However, there are ways to solve this. Potential. Again, these are more theories of mine, and I have no idea if any of these are what Tesla intends to do, or something they might do later on, or something they've already done I have no idea. But it is kind of unfortunate that the situations where a yoke style wheel is usually most inconvenient are the situations where autopilot is also most incompetent. Really tight turns, parking, parking lots, navigating, those kind of things. It's just not that good at that right now. And so those are the situations where you will most likely be most wanting good manual control. So it really shouldn't be a surprise that people are concerned about how impractical this might end up being. But the solutions revolve around the thought that in order to have it retract into the dash and not move with the steering wheels, that you would be at least having some sort of decoupling of the steering control and the steering rack or whatever, or drive-by wire. Now, if you have the drive-by wire, you are capable of actually dynamically adjusting the steering ratio however you want. So imagine if they were to implement that. That would mean that at low speeds, you could have it so that at like a 180 degree turn, for instance, you could have full lock of the driving wheels that steer. But at high speed, you could change the ratio so you could turn the wheel more without having you spin out and careen off the highway wildly. Or you could even have manual control for the ratio, either with a simple toggle where you're like in parking lot mode and highway mode or something like that, or have it be a slider or something like that. That's possible. Is that what they're going to do? I have no idea. It's quite possible that it's a fairly conventional steering rack and they just turn up the ratio uh, a fair amount and tell people to get better at driving. <laughs> like, get good and use autopilot more. Possibly with some sort of additional nanny controls to try and keep you from spinning out on the freeway or something. Who knows? But I do feel like there is some sort of strategy that, if the appropriate technology is put in place, can definitely make this sort of system work. Now, if any of you know anything that's outside of race cars and semi-functional concept cars and that sort of thing that has been implemented like this, please let me know. I'd be quite interested. But we might not know all of the details of Tesla's solution until people start getting the deliveries of them. Who knows? I think I heard rumor that Elon might have some kind of additional call before then that will go over some of the details. But also, he's going to have a call with Nitsa. They seem pretty interested in determining whether or not this steering control is an adequate substitute for a steering wheel or not. So what do you think? Is this just the eccentric vision of the world's wealthiest man? Or is this an inspiring next step towards that full self-driving future that could be quite beneficial to... Pretty much all of us. Will this make it into customers' hands as it's shown here? If so, then when? In the initial deliveries? Or will it be later implemented, perhaps with some input from the regulators? Perhaps some concessions. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and you can check out other videos on uh, my channel. If you want to encourage me to keep going, please subscribe, and uh, you'll be able to see what I'm doing next. And you can also check out my other channel, The Tinker. If you're interested in uh, do-it-yourself stuff and uh, potential new products coming your way from yours truly. So thanks for watching again. Goodbye.